Every Grand Slam tournament is truly a festive occasion. Every year, with tickets sold out, the ritual is again recreated. The perennial visitors are there, some famous, some not. They are there to see, but also to be seen. In their hundreds of thousands, the privileged are admitted to give vent to their emotions in the stands at each Grand Slam. The greatest players of their time organized matches between themselves. It was a traveling circus with an exhausting pace and none of the glory attached to Grand Slam events, no matter how good the tennis. The amateur status of the Grand Slam tournaments meant that most great players of the day who had turned professional were not allowed to compete in the very tournaments that had brought them to the top. It was a war, the amateurs and official tennis against the pros who had opted out to make some money with their talent. And so as things stood, the pros couldn't play in the Grand Slams, and the Grand Slams without the pros missed the best players of the time. World tennis was in a quandary. Then in 1968, Wimbledon went open, and with it, the ball set rolling. Wimbledon's decision to open its competition to all, including professionals, was to revolutionize the entire sport. It was now possible to see the best players from all around the world battle it out for the championship trophies. Soon, all the four Grand Slam tournaments went open, and with it, the fans got to see their favorite stars and the players exhibit their skills, competing with the best in their peer group. Tennis is a sport which is relentlessly demanding, both physically and mentally. And it stands to reason that at the end of each era, only a few were left standing tall. They were the best of the best, the legends of tennis. Their genius came in varying forms, each with their own special gift. Yet they all shared one common factor, an edge that made them superior. In tennis, they call it championship class. <laughs> 